Okay, diagram three, Mr. Abbott again. I'm not going to go to the directions as much, try to make this a little bit quicker. Step one is shade in the terminator. Now, this time you see the sun's rays are coming from the other side. So the sun is coming from the left, this side of the planet would be illuminated, this part would be in darkness. So if you're shading this in, you're going to shade this in like this, the terminator is once again going to be completely straight up and down. Alright, so we've shaded in the terminator. Now, key things to understand. Okay, the circles are where you can get 24 hours of daylight or 24 hours of darkness. This would be the winter solstice in the northern hemisphere if you were from Australia, they'd actually be considering this the summer solstice. Because when we're getting the fewest number of daylight hours, the southern hemisphere is getting the maximum number of daylight hours. If we're getting the lowest angle for our location above the Tropic of Cancer, that means they're getting the highest angle for the locations south of the Tropic of Cancer. Now, the North Pole for number two would definitely be getting 24 hours of day. Uh, the North Pole would be getting zero hours, sorry. Number two is asking about the North Pole. So you'd go from zero hours of daylight. New York would get about nine hours. The equator always gets 12 hours. Okay. The Antarctic Circle would have complete daylight. It would just get to this point here, and the sun would be on the horizon but you'd get 24 hours of continuous daylight at the Antarctic Circle. Okay, At the South Pole, you'd also get 24 hours of continuous daylight. So this sort of side view, equatorial view, you can estimate the number of daylight hours for different locations. Now, they're asking you for the altitude of the noon sun. I'm going to write it in the space here, although that's not where you're going to write it. It's easiest to start at the vertical ray. So point F is definitely at the vertical ray, and the noon sun would have to be at a 90 degree angle. Okay, And that's always where you start. The Tropic of Capricorn is the vertical ray, and you determine how far you've moved from the vertical ray. Now, to go from F to E, you shift up by 23 and a half degrees. So at the equator, you're 23 and a half degrees away from vertical. You do 90 minus the 23 and a half degrees, how much you've moved away, and you would get a 66.5 degree angle. You're starting at the Tropic of Capricorn. You go 23 and a half plus 23 and a half. So you've moved 47 degrees up from the vertical ray. The noon sun is going to be 90 minus 47, which would be 43 degrees, and that's for point D, which is on the Tropic of Cancer. 66 would be point E, which is the equator. Now, you're going from the Tropic of Capricorn all the way up to New York State. You're crossing the equator, so on opposite sides, I'm going to have to add them. I'm going to do all the math here, so I do 43 plus the 23.5, and what happens is I have moved 66.5 degrees away from the vertical ray. All right, so if I'm at the vertical ray, it's 90, 90 minus 66.5 degrees, and for 43 and a half degrees north, I would get that 23 and a half degree angle again, and that would represent point C. Okay. The Arctic Circle, 23 and a half degrees to reach the equator, 66 and a half to get up to the Arctic Circle. I add them and I get 90, so I get 90 minus 90, and I'd get zero degrees for point B, which is on the Arctic Circle. A is 23 and a half degrees into the darkness. 
the sun would not rise for another three months. On March 21st, you'd get sunrise at the North Pole. So, I do 90 degrees plus the 23 and a half. You're on opposite sides. I get 113.5 degrees away from the vertical ray. 90, which is the noon sun position at the vertical ray. 90 minus 113.5 would give me minus 23.5 degrees. Or you could say no sun for the point A, which is at the North Pole. Now, I'm assuming that you can repeat these calculations okay, in the Southern Hemisphere, but you need to be careful. In the Southern Hemisphere, if you're moving down but staying on the same side, when you're on the same side, you would have to subtract those latitudes. But I'm going to let you do those on your own. I'm fairly confident after seeing this much that you should be able to do this. And that was Diagram 3, the Winter Solstice.